Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Yohei Ono, interventional cardiologist at Tokyo University Hospital, and I am delighted to be joined by uh, Mohamed, a uh, distinguished interventional cardiologist, and also my great friend from Leipzig, Germany. Welcome, Mohamed. Thank you. It was truly exciting, exciting moment that you have just presented in our first, very first hotline session here in ESC, talking about a very important study, double choice study. So, Mohamed, first, please let us know about the rationale of the study and the study's design. Yeah, so um, as the name may suggest, so it's called double choice. So we look at two different things. So the design of the study may appear a bit complex, but actually it's not. So it was uh, what we call a two by two factorial mm -hmm. randomized non-inferiority trial in patients on going TAVI. And we looked at two different things. We look at two different anesthesia strategies and two different valve types. Mm -hmm. Um, as for the anesthesia strategies, you know that uh, with the uh, evolution of TAVI, we are like getting more and more comfortable with treating patients, maybe with minimalistic approach. Um, I think the majority of hospitals do not use uh, general anesthesia anymore. Um, but uh, in some places, you also skip uh, even conscious sedation. You skip the arterial line, the venous line, the urinary catheter, and try to keep it like PCI-like. Uh, but this has never been tested in a randomized trial against the standard of care, yeah. which is giving the patient a little bit of conscious sedation, right? With more monitoring, and so on. So this is what one thing we have we wanted to look at and try to determine whether this minimalistic approach is really non-inferior to the standard of care from a safety aspect, sure, um, and like um, peri procedure complications. So an endpoint that we have chosen for this comparison was a 30-day endpoint. endpoint and it was a combination of, of course, death, neurologic events, but also vascular and bleeding complications mm -hmm. because this could be influenced by the lines you insert and also infections okay. uh, requiring antibiotic treatment because of this could also be related to inserting lines, catheters. Yeah. Urinary catheter. Exactly. Yeah. So this was one part of the trial. The other part, we randomized between two self-expanding valve types, between the prototype, the Evolute valve, the family of Evolute, um, and then the accurate new 2 which was like when we designed the trial, a new device, mm -hmm. like uh, the, um, uh, it, it, it came after the NEO. Yeah. Uh, the older version failed to uh, reach an inferiority in two European trials, and NEO 2 had some advantages regarding sealing mm -hmm. uh, and precise positioning and so on, and we wanted to give it a chance sure. in, in well-selected anatomies, mm -hmm. uh, because as you might know, the, uh, it has maybe a little bit of a lower opening for us, requires pre and post dilatation and so on. So we selected anatomies where we thought they are suitable for the device. The heart team had to say, we think that there is an equipose, you can use either device, and then the patients were running was between both of them. And because we wanted to test device performance, we have chosen also a, 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 a proceed or a, like a short term endpoint, also 30 days. It's a bit of an abbreviated clinical safety endpoint, including death stroke, significant leaks and pacemakers. All right. Um, yeah, this yeah. is what we did. Great. So, Mohamed, you actually investigated very important and relevant issues uh, regarding contemporary TAVI practice. So, tell me a little bit about the results. Yeah. So, again, first looking at the anesthesia strategies. So, the minimalist approach was actually non inferior mm -hmm. to the standard of care, and the event rates were numerically lower. Um, they were significantly lower, in, uh, not in the intention to treat population, but in, in um, they, they almost reached statistical significance in a per protocol mm -hmm. analysis, and then they were significantly lower in the NAS treated analysis. But this is confounded by the fact that around 19% of mm -hmm. patients in the minimalist approach crossed over. They required some sedation because of pain or anxiety, not necessarily because of complications. But at the end of the day, we've proven non inferiority. It was not superior in the intensity to treat population, um, and we had around 19% cross over. So this is for the anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, talking about the valve selection, yeah. valve comparison. Yeah. So what will this result uh, change your daily clinical practice? What will be the implication, clinical implication? Yeah. For the valve the strategy, well, well, the accurate valve was actually non-inferior. And the difference was even statistically significant favoring an accurate valve, mainly because of low pacemaker rates. Mm -hmm. 
so mortality and stroke were compatible. What also was interesting for us that paravalvular leaks were compatible, which was like probably the Achilles heel of the accurate valve and other tries. Um, unfortunately, as you know, the valve has been withdrawn from the market now by Austin Scientific a few months ago based on an, the, uh, the uh, IDE trial, based on the United States based trial, because it didn't reach trial priority at one year. These are short outcome uh, data. We will follow up these patients at long term as well. But of course, the clinical implications are mainly like a bit regarding like maybe valve design, future iterations of other valves to get the best of a self-expanding device and try maybe to further work on further reduction of pacemaker rates with the current generations we have. Excellent. So um, actually, this trial was the very first to prove non-inferiority of the uh, accurate platform compared to the contemporarily, let's say, established self-expandable platform. So my learning from your presentation was as follows. One, we need a good pre-dilatation pre as well as potentially post-dilatation. Uh, follow the best practice to maximize the uh, performance of the valve. Uh, I think number two, as you mentioned, the new iteration to NEO2 has made some important role. Uh, are these two... And patient selection. I would say the most important part was patient selection because this was not an all-commerce trial. We included really patients where the heart team said the anatomy, we think the anatomy is suitable for both devices. And I, I do believe that new technologies, when you want to test them in randomized trials against the established valves, there are a lot of disadvantages mm -hmm. for these new technologies if you test them in an all-commer population. You don't have enough experience with the device. You don't know which patients, where the, in which patients the device will work. You don't know in which anatomies. So probably you would need a certain learning curve with a new device and then test it in a randomized trial in, I would say, straightforward cases. Mm -hmm. Try to prove that it works first in straightforward anatomies. Okay. And if it works, then you can move on to the more complex patient because mm -hmm. I would say not every valve should be an all-commerce valve. And none of the valves are actually all-commerce valves. Exactly. Right? We choose, try to choose the valves according to publication anatomy. Exactly. There are like a, a percentage of anatomies where probably all devices would work, mm -hmm. but there is a percentage where there is a differential impact of device type on outcomes. Yeah. Great. So we also, we were able to also learn how to design this kind of valve trials. Thank you so much, Mohammed. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.